everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and we've got another fun So My Style month ahead of us. I am once again a leader and this month is all about jeans. We actually have five jean patterns to pick from this month. Um, and again, if you want to sign up, excuse me, <laughs> below, uh, I'll put a link down where you can sign up. It's free to sign up. You just get emails with the coupon codes for that month's pattern. So it's, I mean, kind of a good deal. And then you're eligible to um, post your stuff on Instagram and or the Facebook page and uh, get some prizes, both mid-month and end-of-month prizes. So again, this month is all about jeans and we're doing five patterns. We are doing three woven patterns. The first two are for men or women. I mean, if you prefer a man's cut jean, um, yeah, definitely, I mean, whoever. Um, but Thread Theory has two different uh, men's jeans patterns. I think one's more traditional and one's a little bit, um, not skinny, but it's a little more um, straight-legged kind of, a little bit lower rise. Um, they are the Quadra and the, um, I can never remember the other one, the Fulton. I think that might be right. <laughs> I'll post pictures of both of those and write the names of them down below um, for thread theory. So that's a, those are both woven jean patterns. And then the uh, Dawn jean by Megan Nielsen patterns. I'll pop that one up there. You guys have seen me make that a ton of times. But that's another woven pattern that we're doing this month. And then we have two stretch jean patterns. We have the Cashmere Ames jeans that are a stretch skinny jean, and then the Megan Nielsen um, Ash jeans that are also a stretch skinny jean. So we've got lots of you to pick, I mean, lots of different patterns to pick from, um, lots of different leg styles, whatever your kind of uh, thing is when it comes to denim. But today, I just wanted to talk about um, stockpiling your notions and your supplies. So you get the pattern, and then what? Uh, because jeans do come with a little bit more um, stuff than your average pattern. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about that. So, for starters, we're going to start off with fabric, I think, and then I'll move on to some of the notions. There's going to be a whole bunch of links below with um, where you can get all of this stuff or anything that's still available to link to. Um, so yeah, so we're going to start with fabric and then go on to notions. Uh, and then later in the month, I will definitely, I've had a lot of requests for the different types of flies. So I've already done a zip fly tutorial. It's on a pair of trousers, but it's the same for a pair of jeans. It's the same um, way that you would install a fly and a zip fly in a pair of jeans. But I thought maybe doing a, um, a button fly, I could do both a hidden and an exposed button fly um, zip, or not zip, their button. <laughs> closure in the front, uh, if that would be of interest to anyone. I've had a lot of questions about pockets as well. Um, more on placement and shape of pocket, size of pocket, that kind of thing, which we can definitely talk about a little bit later as well. So if you have anything else that you're kind of wanting tutorial-wise for the month, leave it down below and I will uh, definitely see about addressing that as the month progresses. All right, so fabric jeans. I love making jeans. They are one of those things that kind of, um, once you've made a couple of pairs, they really go together pretty quickly. Um, and it's one of those that you can, you know, you can go as as tedious almost as you want with top stitching and get real precise and, you know, with contrasting, uh, top stitching and all that kind of thing. Or you can go very simple where maybe your top stitching matches your denim that you've chosen. Um, I mean, there's just sky's the limit and you can play around with different fabrics as well. You do not have to make your jeans out of just traditional denim. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Now I have here, these are actually neither, none of the patterns that we're doing. These are the closet case ginger jeans, but I just wanted to show you. You will probably, if you have been interested in making jeans, been following people that make jeans, I'm sure you've heard of the closet case patterns, ginger jean pattern, number one. And number two, you've heard people talking about Cone Mills denim. Cone Mills was an actual mill that actually just closed recently, um, but it was the last surviving uh, denim mill in the United States, and it was in North Carolina, and I think, it was either North or South Carolina. Anyway, they ended up closing their United States mill, which is very sad, but they are still making the Cone Mills denim, and it's just a very high-quality denim. Their S jean, and that is S-G-E-N-E, -E, <laughs> S jean uh, line of fabric is their stretch and that is what she actually um, used a lot when making the ginger jean pattern. It is a fantastic stretch denim. A little bit harder to get a hold of but not impossible and um, I know that Threadbare, um, is it Threadbare? Threadquarters. Mm, Threadbare fabrics? Again, I'm going to leave a link below. 
Um, they've got some of the S. Jean um, Cone Mills, and you can find it, you know, from time to time. Blackbirds a lot of times does a big, um, where they'll pre do pre-orders for their denim, and then you can kind of pick and choose what you want. Although she's been expanding into some different Japanese denims, which anything Japanese denim is going to be a high end. Although, in my experience, most of that has been selvage denim, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. But as far as your stretch denim, for just your plain old set of jeans, Cone Mills is definitely a good one. Now, if you can't get a hold, I just wanted to show you, I made these jeans like three or four years ago, and it has just aged really, really well. Um, you can just see all the wear patterns in my knees um, and on the butt, and I did not do any distressing of this denim. This is just from me wearing there in the crotch, um, just from it being worn. And it's, it's very beefy uh, denim, so uh, even the stretch stuff, it's not super stretchy. Which brings me to another point. All right, so that's Cone Mills, and I actually have some more that's here in a little bit. This is some more Cone Mills denim that I bought in a, a kit at some point. Someone was like pre-ordering. It may have been, it may have been Blackbird. Um, but it's my denim that I just showed you started off this color, and it's just the dark indigo. You're seeing the back of it that helps protect the dye, but just the dark blue indigo um, color. So that's how it all started and then it just it washes and wears to that gorgeous um, darker blue and lighter blue in some places <laughs> denim. Alright, so that's kind of your traditional denim. Now, Ladybird, she, uh, Lauren Taylor, she goes by Ladybird on Instagram and also on her blog, is a huge jeans guru. She travels the country teaching jean making and all that kind of stuff. She was getting away from the cone mill denim only because it was becoming a little bit harder to find. And she swears by the Robert Kaufman Super Stretch. It's an 8.6 ounce denim. And she, that's like her go-to for, she's made all of her samples out of that denim. Um, I used it on my Mimi G jeans that I did back in the fall, early winter. Um, it's very, very comfortable. And you can use that on either of the um, stretch jean patterns as well. I think it's, I mean, not quite jigging, but I think um, she, they, every, you know, she's definitely very pleased with the recovery on it and all that kind of stuff. And that you can even buy at fabric.com, and I will leave a link down to that before below. Um, I was very impressed with it with my Mimi G jeans. It is super comfortable. Um, it's a little lighter weight than some of these. I think the Cone Mill S jean is maybe a 10 ounce denim. I could be wrong. It may be closer to eight. But the higher you go, the higher, you know, like a 12 ounce denim is usually going to be a rigid denim, like a, um, a selvage or a non-stretch denim that um, is going to be very thick and heavy. So that's kind of the higher you go ounce wise, the thicker the denim. And I think most of these patterns also state, you know, kind of what weight you want. Like you don't want to go below this number or above this number, depending on um, that kind of thing. Also, if you're using any other kind of stretch fabric, which I'm going to talk about here in just a second, you want to be careful and make sure um, most of the patterns either state the stretch percentage that's needed, and in order to find that out, and sometimes when you're ordering online, it'll even say, you know, this denim has 25% stretch or has 10% stretch or whatever. But the way you find that out is you take a sample, a four inch square, and it just needs, a four inch square needs to stretch one extra inch. So it needs to go, for instance, if you're looking for, if it, the pattern calls for 25% stretch, a four inch piece needs to stretch to five inches. Now, some of the stretch jean patterns will just say you need a fabric that has at least, you know, two, three percent lycra. Um, usually that's also available online. You can, um, it'll show you the percent, you know, that it's this many percent cotton, this percentage of lycra or elastane or spandex, all the same thing. Um, so yeah, you just definitely want to make sure you pay attention to that with your stretch patterns because obviously those are going to be drafted a little narrower in some places than your even your body measurements because it's meant to have some stretch there. But you don't have to stick with stretch denim necessarily. You could very easily go with any stretch wovens. Now you want to make sure that it's definitely a bottom weight stretch. But if you wanted to go, again, as long as it has the stretch percentage or the percentage of light cred that the pattern calls for, you could even do something fun, such as this wonderful woven, um, and it's a stretch woven. And again, most um, online stores have the percentage of lycra or the percentage of stretch written in the description. 
but this would have enough, this does have enough stretch that I could do a pair of jeans out of it if I wanted to, which is always fun to do like a brightly colored um, print and a jean. Uh, Lady McElroy also has, and actually um, I, that's a Minerva Crafts make I have coming up, I did, um, they have a drill, a cotton drill that has spandex in it and so it's got stretch and you could do a pair of Ash or Ames jeans out of one of those Lady McElroy prints. Um, it's a substrate, they've, um, I think they've been carrying it for a little bit, but you can get it at Minerva Crafts and again they have very reasonable international shipping. So I will pop a link down below to the Lady McElroy stuff too, which is just kind of really gorgeous prints. This came from Smuggler's Daughter, and if she still has it, I will put that down below as well. But you don't have to stick with denim. You could do any kind of stretch cotton um, that has the necessary, sorry, dumping things, the necessary percentage of stretch, you are good to go. Um, another thing, you know, if you wanted, there's definitely options for colored denim out there. But if you are having an issue and there's, you know, you want a specific color of jean, you can also go with a stretch cotton sateen, which is what I'm going to be making my ash jeans out of. So this is kind of a dusty rose, and you'll see this fabric pop up again in a Minerva Crafts haul. Um, or you actually have already seen it in the haul. But yeah, this is going to be a pair of ash jeans. But again, as long as it has the stretch necessary, uh, you can definitely use just a cotton sateen. As long as it's thick enough, um, you know, you don't want it showing like every bump and everything else, but this, I feel good about this. Some of that comes from um, just trial and error. You just, if once you've made enough, made an, uh, quite a few pairs, you just kind of know what feels thick enough. But again, a lot of times there'll be the weight of the fabric online, especially when it comes to denims. They'll put the ounces, um, and that's how you know that it will work for your project. Because, for instance, you wouldn't want a, a stretch cotton shirting. I mean, that would be too thin for a pair of jeans. All right. So that's the stretch fabrics. Now, I also wanted to point out, because I'm going to talk more about this when I'm talking about notions, but Cashmere right now has got um, Cone Mills kits on their website. And you could use it, you know, for their Ames jeans, definitely, but also for any stretch jeans that you wanted to use. So it comes with the fabric. It comes with the notions. Um... I don't think it comes with a pattern though. I think you do have to buy the pattern separately, if I am correct. But I will leave a link down to those below. But in, I mean, it's basically everything you need to make a pair of their stretch jeans, their Ames jeans, um, which is a fantastic if you've never made jeans before. Just kind of a one-stop shop, you know, everything works. That's, it's, yeah, a great thing. But if you're interested in making the non-stretch denim, which would be the Dawn, or the um, men's jeans patterns, that's also very easy. And Blackbird actually does right now have some bull denim. Anything that says bull denim is going to be a non-stretch denim. A lot of times it'll say non-stretch denim as well. But a bull denim will be a non-stretch. And anything that says selvage denim will be non-stretch. Now, selvage denim, you can get very much into um, the more, the denim connoisseurs. Um, and again, Japanese denim is great for that. And a lot of time that selvage denim will have a very um, intricate stripe or something on the selvage of the denim. And the idea is to leave the selvage inside the side seams of the jeans. So that does require, especially for a woman, some manipulating up top because a woman's, a side seam on a woman's pair, women's pair of jeans is not straight. So it involves making that straight, but then you have to take that, you know, waist dart in and other parts in order to make the jeans fit your waist properly. Um, but that's a whole nother can of worms. I've never made a pair of selvage jeans before, but I mean, I know that there's definitely people that are very into that sort of thing. And a lot of times selvage denim also doesn't get washed. <laughs> the idea is that you wear it and if it gets stained, you, you spot treat it. And then if it starts to smell or anything, it goes in the freezer for a few days. So a lot of the um, uh, denim connoisseurs will not wash their jeans ever. So, <laughs> I don't know what camp you are there. I don't wash my jeans super often, but they do get washed. Um, and there's also people that will wash them and not dry them or whatever. But usually it's the selvage denim that doesn't get washed. So, if you've ever heard anyone talk about that and been wondering what that's about, that's what that's about. So I've got some just regular old white denim that I'm going to be making a pair of Dawn shorts out of for um, this month so you guys can kind of get a look-see. But I'm also going to be making a pair of the men's jeans, and those will be made. I have some, actually I think it's Cone Mills, that I bought um, in a kit a while ago that I'm making my husband a pair of jeans in that non-stretch fabric. But yes, this is fantastic. Another thing that's fantastic for the non-stretch jeans, and I will pop a link up to the video, but 
going to a thrift store and buying large men's jeans and recutting them and using all the parts and pieces. Um, it's a very economical way to get some uh, distressed denim. You don't have to worry about doing any distressing on your own. It's already been distressed. I have my Dawn jeans that I made for my uh, spring capsule that I did out of a pair of men's jeans. Now you want to remember, men's jeans are not made like women's jeans. For instance, let's say that you wear a size 30, for instance, in a woman's jean. If you were to go to a store and buy denim, you wore a size 30, which is supposed to, it's supposed to coincide with your waist measurement. Although, depending on how you're built, if it's a little bit lower rise, you know, you can get away. Because I wear a size 29, usually, in store-bought jeans, and my waist is not 29 <laughs> inches. My waist is more like 32, on a good day. So, um, but the way my hips are is how I'm able to get around that. But women's jeans are meant to um, make room for the rear end. Men's jeans do not have that. They, the crotch curve on a pair of man's pants versus a pair of women's pants is completely different. So you may go to, for instance, I cannot even dream of getting my rear end into a men's pair of size 29 jeans. There's no, I mean, not even close will they come to zipping because it's so narrow and you have no room for the butt in men's jeans. So in order for me to find a pair of men's jeans that I could wear as is, I have to go up to like a 32 or a 34 um, men's pant so it's roomy enough in the hips and butts for me to fit my own hip and butt. So just keep that in mind. You may think you're buying a gigantic pair of men's pants um, when in fact, you know, maybe gigantic in the leg on you or super long, but just keep that in mind. They are made completely different. So don't, because um, I've made that mistake before, buying denim at the thrift store that I would have bought in a woman's size, but a men's jean, and I'm not even close. I mean, not even comically too small. So, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Um, again, the men's uh, jeans that I made my pair of Dawns out of were a size 38 men's jean, and I had very, very little um, scraps uh, left over from that. I mean, I was barely cutting out in certain areas to get everything to fit. I had some length, I mean, quite a bit of length that I chopped off, but just keep that in mind. But it is a very economical um, way to um, make a pair of non-stretch jeans. All right, so that's fabric. <laughs> so you don't have to use just denim. You can use different um, things. And again, with the non-stretch, any kind of cotton twill. If you wanted to use a heavier weight cotton drill or cotton twill, um, as long as the weight is appropriate for a pair of jeans, you can totally go with different colors and that kind of thing. Um, <coughs> Honestly, that Lady McElroy, you could do the non-stretch denim in, with something with stretch. Now, you may have to size down a little bit, um, cause you might find it's too baggy with a little bit of stretch, but yeah, you could definitely mix that up a little bit if you wanted to. All right. Notions. My favorite way to buy jeans notions is to just buy a kit. So I've got here with me two closet case kits and these are two zipper kits. Closet case patterns has both zipper kits and button kits as does style maker fabric. And actually I think I bought these from style maker fabrics. Um, I had a, a, gift card from my husband for my birthday and I used some of it to buy some jeans kits. So basically the hardware kit, it includes, and these are zipper, I think I bought a few zipper ones and a few button ones, but it includes the zipper and that's a jeans zipper and it also includes um, a button and I think it includes like two buttons so if you mess up one you're okay and then rivets as well um, and again it'll, it'll include little extra. So this one is the brass kit here and then I've got one that's kind of the copper, or the rose gold, whatever you want to call. Um, so these are the, the zipper fly kits. And again, you can also buy button fly kits um, from Stylemaker, from Blackbird, from Cashmere. Again, she's selling all of that as well. And I didn't, I know she's selling the kits in addition with the fabric that's all in one bundle. I'm not sure if she's selling just the hardware kits though. I would have to look again. Megan Nielsen also sells hardware kits, so you can buy, and she even has fun little Megan Nielsen patches that you can buy as well to sew onto the back of your jeans. Um, you know, like the leather patches that go um, on ready-to-wear jeans. But she does have both the button fly kits and the zip fly kits. And again, I'm gonna leave links to all of that below. So it makes it very, very easy. Someone had asked me a question about zippers. Yes, jean zippers. They'd asked if you needed a jean zipper for a pair of jeans. I'm going to say yes, I would. Only because there's so much stress, both on a stretch pair and an, um, 
a non-stretch pair of jeans in that hip area just the way that jeans are made and the way that you wear them that it would be super easy to break anything that's not a heavy-duty metal zipper um, and even then sometimes if you make them a little too tight with the anticipation of the denim stretching out and molding to your body you can still have a zipper split and there's nothing more frustrating than trying to replace a zipper that's been top stitched into place I mean you just almost can't go backwards you have to kind of start hand sewing a few things in I mean it can be done a zipper can be replaced in a pair of jeans without disturbing the top stitching but it's just not as great as when you first put one in so just choose the good zippers um, and most zippers that are jean zippers have the locking mechanism at top which means when they when the let me pull it out here and I'll show you these kits also come with jean needles as well so when this thing is up or right out you can zip it but when it is locked into place wait hold on When it's locked up in that up position, you can't unzip that. It is locked. It won't unzip. So you don't have to worry about it coming down on you. So the zip, the um, this thing, and you can almost feel it move into place. It has to be down in order for the zipper to go down. And this is a YKK button or zipper, which are very popular. But yeah, if your uh, zipper pull is locked, it doesn't come down. So that also helps. <laughs> you know with the, especially with the stress that you have in that area on that zipper when it comes to denim all right so that is my I mean you can definitely piecemeal your notions together that's definitely okay I just find it very easy to go this route all right so next thing is thread now again like I said if you're making a pair of jeans that aren't like your traditional pair of jeans and you want you know like for the dusty pink pair I will probably use a matching thread to do all my top stitching on that just because I don't want the contrast on those but excuse me if I was doing an actual pair of denim like blue indigo denim I like to have your regular jeans top stitching my favorite is the Guterman Mara 30 I've got three colors here I have kind of this brown color I have your traditional gold which is this is color 412 this one is color 650 and then there's also this um, kind of a, a coppery color which is color 448 and this is my favorite top stitching uh, thread it's cotton but it is thick now because it is thick you do not put this into your bobbin it you will have tangles and messes galore you want to put a uh, thread that matches your either your denim or whatever color you're working with in your bobbin just regular all-purpose thread in the bobbin and then you put this into the top thread or into the needle so this gets put onto the top you will be so much happier you also want to lengthen your thread your um, stitch length I like to use a 3 or a 5 or 3 a 3 to a 3.5 for my top stitching Again, take some scraps, play around with it, decide what you like, but that's what, um, usually when I'm going with this thicker stuff, I'll go with a 3.5. Um, I just have less issues with that. All right, so that's thread. But for the rest of the jeans, regular all-purpose thread, just this is what I use for the top stitching. Um, unless I, again, if I'm just, if I want my top stitching very subtle, I just use the same thread um, as I would if, you know, that I would use in the bobbin, basically. Um... There's a whole bunch of seam finishes we could talk about. Definitely, you know, you can sew your seams together and serge them. That's definitely A-OK. -okay. Uh, or you could do the flat fell seams. You could do faux flat fell seams. Um, there's a lot, a lot of different seam finishes in there. And again, if that's something you want um, a tutorial on, on the different seam finishes, give me a holler. I can definitely do a little tutorial um, within reason. I'm not going to do a million tutorials this month, but I could definitely maybe pick ones that have the most comments um, to kind of talk about that a little bit more. All right, now the next thing that I wanted to talk about are needles. My favorite are the Schmetz, and they are actual jean needles. There we go. Uh, the jeans needles, you can get them in size 16 or a size 18. Um, I found that it just kind of depends on, I mean, it depends on your denim. Uh, if I'm using the Cone Mills denim, it's a little beefier, and 18 works much better. Uh, but if I'm using a little bit thinner stretch denim or um, or even non-woven or non-woven, 
or even the non-stretch, I will go down to a 16. So just kind of, you know, determine your um, fabric and what you kind of think it needs. But either a 16 or an 18, and they actually do make jeans needles that I would definitely recommend using. All right, and the last tool I wanted to talk about, when it comes to applying your jeans, your rivets, and your snaps, not snaps, your rivets and your jean button, you can definitely buy like the pliers, um, and I've used those before, but it's just as easy. As long as you have a hard surface or an anvil or a cast iron pot or something that you're using, you can use a hammer. <laughs> it's just fine for both the rivets and the um, button. Now I find an, an awl, A-W-L, um, for poking the hole before I stick those in to work really well. Um, you can get those at hardware stores actually. So that is, yeah, and a nice, a nice real hammer. Don't get a baby hammer, get a real hammer for hammering that hardware in. But I wanna show you one last thing. Hold on one second. Okay, one last tool that I find very, very helpful for making jeans is a mallet. <laughs> See, jeans can be very therapeutic. Um, this one is a wooden mallet, and actually a friend of mine, her dad made this. Um, and it actually is made more for leather work because you have to, you can't iron leather. So pounding your seams open um, and your hems, all this is fantastic. But it works great for jeans. So I would, I steer, steer clear of a hammer um, when you are hammering your seams. Only because I have had a couple of times, because I, I hammer the hem too, where the friction of the metal of a hammer will um, almost melt the lycra if you have any stretch in your denim. And then when you wash it, you'll have little holes along that hem or seam where you've pounded the living daylights out of it. So I have quit using a hammer to do to, to hammer all my seams. And I will use this, or you could get just a regular rubber mallet, again, that comes from the hardware store. But anywhere where you have seam intersections, um, especially like where the yoke attaches, um, both in the center back seam and where, because it, it also attaches to the top of the pant, if you just hammer the living daylights out of it, make it, I mean, it'll be so surprising how um, flat that that gets and it goes through your sewing machine so much easier. So definitely have something that you can hammer the seams with and the hems. It really does make life, anything where, it makes life so much easier, and it'll go through your machine so much, so much better. Okay, I think that's it for today. Um, all about the supplies and notions that you'll need to make for your jeans. Again, if there's any specific tutorials, I was kind of thinking doing a button fly tutorial and a hidden button fly. So an exposed button fly, whereas when you button it up, you just see the buttons there on the front of the pant, or a hidden one that looks like a zip fly, but it's got buttons in there instead of a zipper. Because um, again, I have done a zip fly tutorial and it's on the channel um, and the way that I do it in the pants is exactly the way you could do it on a pair of jeans. Um, oh, last bit of thing, interfacing. I do not interface waistbands on stretch jeans. I find it way more comfortable to use the same fabric on the front and the back because it has some stretch and I do not, ready to wear d does not interface their waistbands. Um, also, when I did my waistband on my Dawn jeans, I took those men jeans apart. There was no interfacing in that waistband. Those were a pair of Wrangler jeans, so a well-made pair of jeans, and I did not put interfacing into it. I interface the um, piece of the fly where the zipper goes, and uh, that's about it. Maybe on the top, if you've got a stretch denim, um, sometimes putting a little strip at the top of the pocket just because you're going to fold that and you're going to top stitch the... Um, the hem there at the top of the pocket might not be a bad idea just to keep it from distorting when you're sewing um, but really that's the only place where interfacing goes on um, jeans whether stretch or non-stretch so yeah I wanted to throw that in there too uh, but if there's any other questions that you've got again if you'd like to see some different seam finishes on how to do a flat felled seam how to do a faux flat felled seam um, yeah Put it down in the comments below and um, I can work on maybe getting some tutorials together for the rest of the month. All right, so jean making month, here we come. I uh, hope you guys have a great week and I will see you all on Friday. Bye.